Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the part two of lecture on industrial building allowance. In the previous video, we um I have explained to you about uh, what are the building that is being classified as industrial building, and also the rate of that particular building. So basically, we have done with this uh upper item, and now uh. For part two, I would like to continue with the next one, where in this video, I will talk about the QBE, okay, also includes any CE on the construction, extension, alterations, renovation, and initial repair of the industrial building. Okay, so uh, having said so, you have to, again, um, uh, always bear in your mind, when we talk about QBE, QBE is stand for qualifying building expenditure. Only QBE can get IBA. Only QBE can claim IBA. But the thing is that uh, the item that will be listed as QBE, it must be in the nature of capital expenditure. So if we were to have industrial building, for example, we have a factory. Okay, it's just not about the cost of construction cost of the con of constructing and purchasing the factory I can the QBE QBE will also include it will also include any capital expenditure that we incurred on the factory on the industrial building where it could be uh, construction yes construction and purchase memang dah. it could be extension alteration renovation and also initial repair so, what you can see is that any capital expenditure that we incurred on industrial building will be a QBE. Okay, apa-apa capital expenditure yang kita incurred on industrial building, it will be part of the QBE. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the next one where we are going to talk about what is QBE. Okay, basically QBE can be divided into two because you just imagine here you have an industrial building the question is that how can we make this industrial building in existence okay there are three cara first kita construct okay we bought a piece we buy a piece of land and we construct the industrial building okay ini pun boleh ini jadi qbe or another way around is that what happen is that you purchase an industrial building Ada building, kita purchase dia terus. Okay, yang ni pun akan jadi QBE. Tapi, the the thing is that we need to know how to compute the QBE for constructed industrial building and how to compute the uh, QBE for purchase industrial building. But, uh, apart from this, there's another way of um, having a, an industrial building is that by leasing ataupun by renting out. Kita sewa. Okay, we don't own the industrial building. We just have the right to use it because we rent the industrial building from someone else. Okay, issue di sini, bila kita sewa, we have to pay rental expenses, right? Rental expenses in the eye of uh, Income Tax Act, it is not a capital expenditure but it's a revenue expenditure. Therefore, uh, the rental expenses that we paid on the rental industrial building will not be entitled. We are not going to be entitled for uh, IBA. They become part of the QBE because again, as I said earlier, QBE it must be in the nature of capital expenditure. But, assuming that this is your factory, Factory ni kita sewa. So the rental expenses that we paid for the rental of the factory tak dapat IBA. Dia bukan QBE. It's not the QBE. However, if you were to renovate, awak renovate ke, awak buat alterations or maybe uh, you make an extension, ada buat extension ke apa semua, all these layak dapat IBA. Dia jadi Q. BE. Sebab apa? Because it is a capital expand teacher and we incurred it on an industrial building. Clear? Okay. So now let's take a look at this one. Because QBE tadi kita ada yang constructed QBE. We can have a purchase QBE. So let's take a look at the uh, how are we going to compute? How are we going to determine? Uh, sorry. QBE. Okay, sorry. Nampak ah? 
QBE for purchase building. So now I'm looking at this. How are we going to determine the QBE for purchase building? Okay, it says here QBE for the purchase building is that kita just take the purchase price. Ambil harga kita beli tu purchase price but kena tolak exclude the cost of land. Because cost of land, land is not a building. They're not part of the building. So, industrial building allowance is only given on the constructed uh, phase to saja. Tanah tak termasuk. Jadi, kalau kita purchase industrial building, how to compute the QBE is very simple. You just take the purchase price of it. Tapi, kalau purchase price tu inclusive of the land, kena buanglah harga land tu because it need to be excluded. How about the QBE for constructed industrial building? That industrial building, kita construct. Okay, so how are we going to compute the QBE for the constructed building? For this um, at uh, for this item, I would love you guys to take a look at your textbook. It is um, on page 346, item 5.0. Okay, take a look at your textbook and but I have it here with me. I've snapped a picture of it. But please, eh, nanti take out your textbook to juga <coughs> have a look at it. Okay, it says here, uh, this one is from your textbook, page 346, item 5.0. <coughs> Qualifying building expenditure means capital outlay. Again, dia pun cakap, ini ialah capital outlay. Meaning of capital outlay is actually, uh, dia ialah capital expenditure lah. Outlay ni kan uh, expenses, dua apa, kita punya duit keluar. So, it must be capital outlay, outlay incurred on the building and any incidental cost exclusively related to the industrial building. It includes the following. So, these are the costs related to the industrial building, uh, into the QBE of the uh, constructed building. The architect fees, okay, the cost of preparing plan, uh, uh, and other costs in connection with obtaining approval from the local authority for the erection of the building. Costs of architect fees because we need them to design the building for us and in order to construct the building, we need to get the approval from the local authority. Local authority ni maksudnya pihak berkuasa tempatan. It could be Madlis Daerah, it could be Madlis Perbandaran, it could be Dewan Bandaraya. Okay, and also the cost of clearing the old site, including the demolition of any existing non-industrial building. Okay, Kasni, what I want you to do is that to make some adjustment. Okay, there's a slight adjustment there. Okay, mana pen kalau biru saya. Okay, there's a slight adjustment here. Okay, dia, if you were to read the book, they kata ialah. Uh, the cost of clearing the old site, including the demolition of any existing building. It is not just any existing building. The demolition of any existing, dia ialah non-industrial building. Okay? Clearly, clearing the old site, including demolition of any existing building. Assuming, untuk this item, assuming you wanted to build a factory on this piece of land. And on this piece of land that you just bought, there are the katakala uh, squatter houses. Uh, there are the squatter houses. Huh? Squatter houses. Rumah setinggan. What happened? Kita clearkan rumah setinggan ni. Kita bayar compensation, kita clear tanah ni semua. Kita demolish, kita berobokan. So, the cost of demolishing, cost of demolishing rumah setinggan, dia akan jadi part of the QBE. Cost of demolishing rumah setinggan. Why? Because squatter houses is not an industrial building. But how about, katakanlah, katakanlah, uh, yang kita, tanah kita purchase tu, uh, uh, dia dekat situ dah ada old factory dah. Dia ada satu factory. Katalah kilang, proses, apa benda lah, apa-apalah. Uh, an old factory. You just bought this piece of land and you wanted to build a new factory. What happened? You demolish this factory. Kita robohkan factory yang lama ni. Cost of demolishing old factory ni tak jadi QBE. It will be not it will not be part of the QBE. Sebab apa? Sebab yang kita demolish tu ialah existing industrial building. So, 
Cost of clearing the old site termasuk demolition ni cuma boleh kalau building yang kita demolish tu ialah non-industrial building. Okay? So, kindly make some adjustment on your textbook. Bukan existing building, eh? they're non-industrial building. Okay, the cost of construction which includes labour, material, haulage, management, supervision and other overhead charges. We wanted to construct a building. Definitely, these are the cost incurred in order untuk bina bangunan tu. Interest expand on loan borrowed to construct, to construct the building till its completion. Katalah masa kita nak construct kita punya factory tu. Okay, while we are, we want to construct our factory tu, katalah this is kita punya factory kita nak construct. Uh, kita fund dia using uh, borrowed fund. Kita pinjam duit from bank. Okay, kita untuk buat bangunan ni. So, what happen when we uh, borrowed money from bank, kita kena bayar interest sekali kan? Interest and principal. So, interest yang kita bayar ke bank because we wanted to construct a new apa industrial building this interest akan jadi part of the QBE masuk dalam QBE sampai bila sampai its completion till its completion when the building is completed the construction has completed in that apa interest ni dah tak jadi dah QBE dia cuma jadi QBE masa dia still lagi under construction Okay, incidental expenditure on work which means separately contracted. Example, drainage scheme, installation of water, electricity. Uh, contoh, macam kilang, um, private hospital, they definitely kena buat juga apa tu, power supply ke apa, tak tahu lah, dia kena buat bilik khas ke, ataupun dia buat drainage system yang kadang-kadang drainage system ni tak 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 masuk dalam kos buat bangunan dia ada asing punya ini juga akan jadi part of the QBE kita buat parking lot parking space uh, yang internal punya okey yang internal punya itu pun ialah QBE Okay, what else here? Dia kata, the cost of installing fitting, example wiring for electric supply, fan, air conditioning equipment. Okay, fittings ni pun akan termasuk juga. Tapi kalau air condition semua tak jadi QBE. Air condition semua dia ialah QPE. Kita claim normal capital allowance. Lepas tu legal charges, I'm looking at number berapa ni ya? Eh? Number 8 sekarang ni. Legal charges, stamp duty, Connected with the acquisition of land. Okay, apa-apa stamp duty tapi berkaitan uh, uh, apa acquisition of building. Apa-apa legal charges and whatsoever yang pertaining to the building, semua akan jadi QBE. Ah, This part is very crucial. You have to apa baca benda ni betul-betul. Dia kata apa? The cost of the land, ni cost of land. The cost of land, legal fees berkaitan dengan apa? Relating to the acquisition of land will not qualify for industrial building allowance. Okay? Legal expense on loan borrowed to construct the building pun tak termasuk juga. Okay? So, ada tiga item kat sini yang will not be part of the QBE. Dia bukan part of the QBE. <coughs> okay? So, now... Coming back to our point here. So basically, kita dah tengok what is the QBE untuk purchase building? What will, what will the QBE for constructed building? Okay, because in your question, sometimes what would happen, uh, the question, dia tak akan bagi ke awak QBE of the bangunan tu. Dia tak bagi macam tu. Dia akan bagi dalam bentuk apa list macam ni lah. So you have to determine. Yang tu entitled for QBE ataupun tidak. I will do the tutorial with you later on. But now, what I want to do is that kita straight away habiskan dulu dengan dia punya lag, lecture. Okay. So, next one. Next one is about the special issues on QBE. We are still talking about the QBE. Because the QBE is very important. Why? Because only QBE can claim IBE. Yang dapat status QBE je dapat claim I, B, A. So, now tadi kita dah ada dah. Kita dah ada dah bangunan. So, you know, your bangunan tu it could be a purchase industrial building ataupun constructed industrial building. So, bila kita ada benda ni, 
Tapi dia ada special issue pula berkaitan dia What is the special issue that we may have Dekat sini Okay, yang first one I will start with this one Part of building used as industrial building Okay, what does it mean by part of Only part of the building is used as industrial building Okay, take a look at this for example Katalah this is your factory building Okay, this is your industrial building This is your factory area Ini kita punya factory area Okay, factory area ni mana? Uh, factory, we have defined what is factory, right? Berlakunya proses lah, simpan, plan, machinery, bagai semua Dekat sini is the cafe Cafe jadi tak industrial building Take a look at my previous video uh, Apa industrial building lecture 1 Dia kata apa-apa staff welfare itu industrial building Ini pun industrial building, ini industrial building We have cafe uh, cafe dah Kita ada surau Ini pun industrial building welfare untuk staff kita kan Pekerja kita Lepas tu katakanlah Ini kita punya office tu punya showroom Kita punya kilang tu punya showroom Okay uh, showroom uh, Sekejap eh Katalah sini Sini showroom Okay Sini kita punya admin office If you still remember In our previous video I did not mention about admin office Dan juga showroom Sebagai part of industrial building Jadi Dia ada isu kat sini because dalam kita punya kilang kita ni Dalam kita punya industrial building Ada kawasan yang kita pakai as industrial building Ini industrial building, ini industrial building Ada yang kita utilize as non-industrial building <coughs> Ada juga yang sebagai non-industrial building Dua ni ialah non-industrial building So whenever this kind of thing happen Where dalam satu industrial building Ada yang partly use Partly use sebagai industrial building Ada juga part yang non-industrial building You have to apply 10% rule The 10% rule dia kata apa? If NIB NIB ni stand for non-industrial building eh? Ah. It says here, if non-industrial building less or equal than 10% of the whole building, the entire building is deemed as industrial building. Okay, meaning to say, non-industrial building ni katakanlah, admin ni, dia do ada 5%. Admin 5% daripada entire uh, apa space tu. Showroom dia do ada 4%. So, total of non-industrial building here ialah 5 plus 4 is only 9%. 9% dia ialah apa? Less than 10% of the whole building. Therefore, in this case, we are going to assume that the whole building here is industrial building. Dia dapat status industrial building. Katalah cost of constructing semua ni ialah 1 million. So, awak tu selalu buat computation macam ni. Awak pun buat... QBE equal to 1 million Lepas tu, in the first year tolak IA, tolak A, A Katakanlah dia factory Factory pakai general rate 10% and 3% So yang ni dapat 100,000 And this one got 30,000 Kita kira lah, dapatlah RE lepas tu Okay, faham? What about pula Kalau sekarang ni the situation has changed Okay Percentage dia tak sama Katakanlah Show admin ni Office tempat letak office Manager semua ni Yang ni 5% But showroom dia 7% When the showroom 7% What happen Your non-industrial building lah ni Non-industrial building sama dengan 5 campur 7 Equal to 12% kan So the industrial building tu dia dah exit 10% Daripada the whole building What happen dia kata the QBE need to be a portion QBE kena buang non-industrial building So for this case Okay For this case Our QBE is no longer 1 million What happen is that 1 million ni kena buang 12% Kalau kita buang 12% Kita cuma tinggal berapa persen saja? 88% so you have to time times it like this okay yang boleh claim dia cuma 880k no longer 1 million so bagilah ia 
IA dengan AA. Yang ni 10% and this one is 3%. Letaklah. Okey. Katakanlah besok-besok ni kalau kita masuk tahun ke berapa, company ni jual. Bangunan tadi tu yang daripada bangunan tu 12% ni ialah non industrial building ni dia jual. Bila dia jual Awak ingat eh, kita katakanlah de, lepas dapat RE nanti Apa yang jadi kita akan compare RE ni dengan uh, uh, disposal value kan Okay dengan disposal value dengan sales proceed Katalah jual bangunan ni 1.5 juta Boleh tak kita letak kat sini 1.5 juta terus nak compare dengan ni Okay yang ni 88,000 Ah, yang ni awak do the calculation lah berapa RE dia contoh Contoh RE dia dapat 700,000 Boleh ke RE ni kita compare dengan disposal value Yang 1.5 million Tak boleh, it wouldn't be fair Sebab apa? Because 1.5 million Is the selling price If the sales proceed of the whole building Padahal QBE tadi Kita cuma ambil berapa persen saja 88% So disposal value ni Tak boleh ambil 1.5 million What happen is that 1.5 million ni kena times dulu dengan 88% Baru boleh buka sini Then only this comparison ni uh, Betul Sebab tadi QBE pun kita ambil 88% So sales proceed dia pun we can only take 88% Okay clear? So if it's clear Inilah yang berkaitan dengan uh, 10% rules We are going to apply 10% rule Kalau apa? Kalau dalam satu industrial building tu Dia ada dua purposes Dia ada dua purpose Satu sebagai industrial building Satu sebagai non-industrial building Tengok Dia exit 10% ke dia tak exit 10% If it doesn't exit 10% The whole building jadi industrial building Tak payah apportion Tapi kalau dia exit We have to apportion Okay This is number one I would call this as Special issues on QBE kan Yang ni yang number one Special issues on QBE Yang number two pula Ialah berkaitan dengan 75% rules Okay 75% rules dia macam ni Dia kata 75% rules Dia kata <coughs> uh, Dia ada P Campur L Equal to E P campur L Equal to E What is P? P is cost of plant and machinery And its installation L pula ialah apa? Cost of preparing Cutting, tunneling And leveling Land In order To install the machine In order To install The machine Okay, the plan and machinery Lepas tu kita akan pakai 75% rules Okay, uh, I will explain you to, this to you There are certain times, katalah this is our factory This is our factory area In uh, Bila kita ada factory, kita kena masukkan plan and machinery, right? Okay, nak masuk plan and machinery ni 75% rules, dia about special plan and machinery tau Special plan and machinery Where this plan and machinery ni Dia bukan boleh letak macam tu saja in kita punya factory You need to do something in order to make it apa uh, apa senang untuk kita install You have to do something Contoh dia macam ni um, Benda mesin yang kita beli ni Dia bukan duduk dalam building tau Dia kena duduk di bawah tanah Mesin ni kena install dalam bawah tanah So what happen Awak akan ingat cost Yang berkaitan dengan uh, Leveling Tunneling Buat macam tunnel uh, Apa lagi tadi saya lupa dah sorry uh, So you might have this lah uh, Preparing Cost of preparing ni uh, Kita nak prepare dia Cost ada preparing Cutting Tunneling Leveling Length Okay, bila kita ingat such cost, dia kata apa? There might be a situation where sometimes uh, formula dia macam ni eh. The formula is P campur L equal to E. P ialah cost of plant and machinery campur sekali dengan dia punya installation cost. L ni yang tadi cost yang tadi tu. If you want to install the machine, kita kena do something. With the land Sama ada kita prepare dia dengan cara cutting, leveling, tunneling, uh, tunneling land So yang ni preparing land Cost of preparing land the, There might be some situation where The cost of preparing the land ni L ni kadang-kadang dia lagi besar daripada P 
Okay Dia lagi besar pada P So In this situation Apa yang rules ni kata Rules ni kata Kalau L Okay If L 